Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Hey, Bramo. Thank you. I was just going to say there's a man next to me who probably doesn't want the Federal Reserve to hike again anytime soon. I can catch up with my old friend, Governor Lesetja Conyago. Governor, thank you very much for being with us at the IMF. Good to be here. Inflation comes down to 5.3. The market, the general estimate, the consensus estimate was 5.4. First question, you cutting interest rates off the back of a downside surprise like that. Well, we had 5.3 um, as our forecast as a central bank. Um, and I guess that the fact that the markets get excited that the, uh, the print had surprised them by 0.1 just tells you the extent of the uncertainty that uh, uh, we are in. Uh, we have not quite seen a discernible trend uh, because we had peaked at 7.8% uh, in 2022 and we were coming down uh, nicely. We went all the way to 47 and then we started to go up uh, again and it rose all the way to 56 and we are now at 5.3. There isn't a discernible uh, trend. But a, a look at the components of inflation makes for an interesting read. Uh, food prices have continued their downward trend. Uh, they might be reaching uh, the bottom it's too early to tell because we do not know the effects of, uh, 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 of El Nino. Core has also now uh, come down to 4.9 percent and we hope that it sustains, uh, it sustains that uh, uh, momentum. And so, so too early to tell what a discernible trend uh, would be. Speaking of upside surprises or small surprises and big reactions, saw a similar thing in the United States last week, the other way around. You had a downside surprise. US CPI came in a little bit hotter than expected, and all of a sudden, the markets, big moves in rates, dollar a whole lot stronger, and big questions about central banks abroad and the consequences for them. Could you give us a bit of color on that, Governor? What are the consequences for you? How independent is your policy from what the Federal Reserve may or may not do in the future? Well, we, we watch the Fed, we don't follow the Fed. Uh, the decisions of uh, the Fed are, uh, reflect a key institution's take on the U.S. economy, which is the largest economy uh, in the world. We are a small open uh, economy. The actions of the Fed have an impact on global financial uh, conditions, and global financial conditions have got implications for the direction of capital flows and, uh, and thus a uh, realignment of, uh, uh, of exchange rates. And actually, um, at our previous, at many of our meetings in the past, we had highlighted that the tight uh, global financial conditions have got uh, implications for the exchange rate and by extension uh, could lead to an impact on domestic, uh, on domestic prices. There are a range of other uh, factors, but uh, yeah. we do not follow the Fed. We watch it. We started tightening policy a, a good 12 months before the Fed started doing it. We started in uh, 2021. The Fed only started in 2020, uh, 2022. And, uh, but the actions of the Fed have got huge implications for global financial markets. Big implications for the FX channel as well. The rand's actually been pretty stable against the backdrop of a much, much stronger dollar. Why do you think that is? Uh, difficult uh, to tell. This currency gets... Uh, uh, everywhere. I think that there had been a lot of negative news that had gone into the uh, into the rent. There's been a lot of uh, uncertainty. And I, when I talk to market players in South Africa, I said there is an uncertainty about the elections. And I said that half of the, more than half of the world population uh, is voting this year. What yeah. makes the South African elections so special? I said, well, the one thing is that for the past 30 years, all that we knew was one governing party, and now there is a possibility that we might end up in a coalition and if you end up in a coalition who do we end up with a coalition uh, with and this is a lot of uncertainty which then says that with the elections behind us and now everybody knows exactly what the political outlook is and if the concerns had been about that that yep. means that it takes away a uh, massive uh, uncertainty for us as a central bank we have just been looking uh, at the data and whether we are picking up any discernible trend from the data. You mentioned the politics. I didn't. So let's talk about the politics. You've got an interesting calendar ahead of you. I think the end of May is the election, and your policy decision is a day after. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So the conversation we're having in the United States, I'll give you some color on that, and I'll tell you what it sounds like, and I'm sure you're familiar with it. There is this belief that the Federal Reserve won't really do anything around the election, that because they don't want to get political, they'll avoid politics, but at the same time, they're considering politics to avoid being political. How does that work for you? Well, we are, we are very clear. 
Uh, this is an interesting thing. We release a calendar of our policy meetings a year in advance. We didn't know when the president will pronounce an election, and he announces an election bang in the middle of our uh, our policy meeting. We have got to look through that, and there is a reason why we um, are focused just on data, and we are taken away from the political cycle so that we can actually make technical decisions and not be affected uh, by the political cycle. But there is also something. The president decided to insulate the Reserve Bank from, from the political cycle by yeah. taking a decision about the renewal of my term and those of my deputy governors and the term of the uh, commissioner of the South African Revenue Services make those decisions ahead of the elections so that it, it does not get affected by uh, it does not get affected by the political by the political cycle so we make our decisions based on data based on our outlook for both growth and for for, uh, for inflation so congratulations on a second term I do have a final question though the conversation with the Treasury about a new inflation target where are we with that and do you expect to come to an agreement sometime soon? There should be an agreement, but uh, I don't expect anything to happen before the elections. This is not like gotcha. our policy calibration decision. This is about the framework and uh, uh, making changes on, uh, uh, on the framework. Um, the Treasury had commissioned a macroeconomic uh, uh, review. And, um, uh, and as part of the budget uh, documents, they did release a document on the macro review, including the consideration of the lowering of, a, uh, uh, of the inflation target. That is a conversation that uh, we, would, uh, we would continue. The manner in which the, the process works in South Africa is that the minister makes the announcement about a, 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 a target, but there is a process towards that announcement, and that process is a technical process between uh, the Reserve Bank and the National Treasury. Governor, you've been very kind to give us so much time. Thank you very much for being with us here in Washington, D.C.